We are at the normal ballistic department and we're here to shoot at gel blocks. Not regular gel blocks, we're shooting at special gel blocks because we embedded a shoulder roll deer bone uh, into the gel block to see the effects it has on our bullets and of course to give this as much realism as possible. So we added about three centimeters of gel before the shoulder bone, which resembles the muscle tissue you find at any rodeo. We're here to shoot the normal tip strike, echo strike, and the oryx. And these are the bullets we will test fire at the rodeo shoulder bone. First, it will be the normal oryx our bonding specialist, I would say. Uh, then we will go for the Norma tip strike, driven hunt specialist, uh, very thin jacket, uh, so highly reactive bullet. And we will use the Norma echo strike, the lead free alternative out of the Norma product range, a monolithic bullet, and it opens up mechanically. So very interesting to see the results on these bullets. So here's the mushroom of the normal oryx well bonded as you see the bullet is with a residual weight of 99 percent i bet you can test it at home and find it out yourself um, i expect this bullet to well it will stay intact even though it will hit the bone but that's exactly what it's designed for and we're here to prove this once and for all So let's see what happened there. Wow, and see that's that's uh, uh, water, like blood tissue from the bone. It's going down. It hit, hit the, the ground. Hits the table. Yeah. We retrieved the bullet, and I'm highly satisfied with the result. The Oryx proved its bonding technology and if we weigh this, I believe we will see that we have 98 or 99 percent of bullet weight retention. We see very, very little, maybe one or two spots in here of lead fragments, um, but I'm highly satisfied with the result. And if we look at the point of impact, that couldn't have been any better. So we hit this small bone uh, that keeps the two uh, muscles together in the shoulder bone. So we penetrated a lot of bone with the oryx. We made it as difficult for the bullet to stay, in to, to stay intact as we could. And we see that uh, most of the energy was transferred here. And that's exactly what we need. This is where the heart and lung area sits, right behind here. So, exceptionally well done. So, but if I compare this, and especially if I look at it this way, compare this to the mushroom of the test shoot, I think it shows some difference, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. So, of course, bone have some effect from the bullet. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the entry side, uh, both. This was the test shooting gel block and that's, that was the one we actually shot at with the Oryx. And if you compare the two um, bullet paths, you see that the um, bone at the beginning really helped the bullet to expand and show all its class of the bullet because you got so much more energy transfer into the body and that's exactly what we would try to prove. So if we measure this, then I would say we have about six centimeters. Yeah, six. And if we do the same here, we have 11 centimeters. So basically, this is much more suitable of showing the true power of a 308 uh, than the pure 
gjort jävla bra. Så det är bra att du skulle göra. Uh, ja, jag tror du kan gå på att sätta upp den. Är du höjd? Eller åt den? Normal tip strike versus rodeo shoulder bone. I expect some heavy reaction, especially when we compare at this to what we know now after we shot the Oryx. So it will be super interesting to see. Wow. Good good shooting. Wow. So we see a lot more fragments. So the tip strike proved to be devastating after hitting bone. We see many, many lead particles which can cause tremendous um, damage. And when you talk about fragmenting bullets, then that's exactly what they're designed to do. Even on a bad shot, you will have uh, a higher chance that some of the fragments will puncture an artery, for example, or hit the heart area. And uh, that's what they're designed to do, and that's what we see. So here, here, here. Here, that's the orange polymer tip. If we turn this around, you see a big fragment here. If we turn this around, you see more fragments. And a completely shattered bone. So with the oryx, we hit this part of the bone. Uh, we shot a little to the right. But this, if we would have hit this here, we would see even more penetration, more expanding, more fragmentation. So here's the remaining bullet. And what we can automatically say, it's a lot less but the most important part is that it's still intact and that's how the lead lock works we have enough residual weight and enough bullet left to punch through you could say the deadly message was delivered by the tip and the heavy rear punched through in basically an opposite direction. You would expect it to bend like this way, but it doesn't. So let's measure the wound channel. Nine centimeters compared to almost 10 centimeters of the oryx. So the expansion in the wound channel of the oryx was more. Why that? I can only guess, I believe, due to the fact that the bonding technology keeps the bullet intact, we deliver more energy, which causes a bigger expansion of the gel block. And the tip strike, well, the shock effect comes from separating the bullet. So, yeah. what do the ballistic, what does the ballistic department think about this theory? I think it's the reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You see the Oryx cavity is a little bit longer than the tip strike yeah. cavity. And, and wider. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. longer and wider. Yeah. What you also see comparing these two bullets is that the Oryx gives most of its energy a little bit deeper into the tissue. And that the tip strike delivers most of its energy, I would say the first fourth after infecting the jaw block. 
So if you need penetration, Dorix is needed. If you need shock effect, an instant, uh, well, instant energy transfer, you go for the tip strike. Next in line is the Norma Echo Strike, the left free brother of the Norma Oryx. So I expect similar results. The bullet will punch through and the bone will definitely not stop it. So let's see what it does. I don't want to hear anyone say lead free bullets are not effective or they're not able to kill. Definitely prove the difference here. So, and what we see is a deep cavity down here. The cavity would have even be higher, but it stopped here because there was no gel. So it's absolutely astonishing to see how much energy was actually transferred. I think it's even Energy-wise or cavity-wise, the biggest uh, cavity we've seen out of all of the products. Oh, very hot. Exactly how it meant to be. Beautiful mushroom. 100% residual weight. Sharp fins that rotate through. No particles or fragments in the gel block. A continuous energy transfer. There, of course, there was a peak, I would say, in the first half of the block. So the amount of energy is given into the body is, I would say, extended even. Uh, the bone helped opening up uh, the bullet, I would say. And that's a lot of energy being transferred here. And it's even cut open. The only fragments we see in the block are the one from the green polymer tip. It helps to manually open the monolithic bullet. Wow. Uh, you can see it a little bit lighter. Of course, you have a, a little bit higher impact in the in the block, but uh, you see the the curve is higher than uh, yes. we have and in the in yeah. The and even though uh, we uh, the the bullet was higher, we have the yeah the cavity still down the, to the, the bottom yeah, of the, the, ca the cavity the, goes still down to here. Yeah. So it's wow. But of course, it's easier to to move lift. It. Yeah, 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 to lift it if it's not that much material yeah. above it. Yeah. Uh, so let's come to a conclusion. What are we actually seeing here and what are the results of the test? Well, first of all, I think we can say that it does make a big difference whether you test just a gel block shot or one with the bone inside. And it proves that the bullets at Norma are much more effective than ever seen before. Especially, especially if you look at these two. Uh, this here was our test gel block and this one, this was the one with the bone inside and you see that with the bone you have much more energy transfer and a bigger cavity compared to the test block. And this also proves that it does make a big difference whether you hit a rib or you pass a rib and the bullet just slides through. So hitting bone is always a good point, I guess it helps to kill fast and ethical. What else do we see? Uh, we see on all bullets a straight penetration and that's very important. So if you hit a bone the bullet doesn't get deflected and maybe hit the stomach area or goes out in a weird angle where it, may, where it might be uh, in dangerous to others uh, on a driven hunt. So that's another good point in, in my point of view. We see straight lethal hits, uh, good energy transfer, and that's exactly why we've done the test. So let me know in the comments whether you like this and if we should continue with this because we definitely got some moves, bones in the backhand or maybe some wild ball. Please let me know, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the normal YouTube channel.
this helps us to produce videos like this. So stay safe and keep on hunting.